Impact Wrestling signs Chris Bay. Gut check returns. Larry D and AC Romero impress as a tag team. We find out what Impact Wrestling internet trolls are up to. All this and more coming up now on Shooting Up North with Lewis Carlin right here on the Impact Lounge. Hey folks, Lewis Carlin here. Hope everyone's doing well. So Impact Wrestling has signed Chris Bay. Young, up-and-coming, 24-year-old, potentially great Chris Bay. I've seen a number of matches with Chris Bay, and he's done nothing but impress me. So I think it was a terrific signing by Impact Wrestling. It's exactly what they need. They need to get younger. They need to get faster they need to get more exciting and chris bay brings that to impact wrestling very very happy with the signing of chris bay and you know cody rhodes cody rhodes was interested cody rhodes was interested in in signing chris bay but chris bay chose impact wrestling so thank you chris bay for choosing impact wrestling you know impact wrestling has just got a little more exciting, a little more better with the signing of Chris Bay. And uh, if you if you went on, uh, if you were on Facebook, if you're on Twitter, um, when they announced the signing of Chris Bay, uh, a lot of people, a lot of people are out there saying uh, they're commenting who or like with a question mark. They they don't know who Chris Bay is. Like who? I mean, come on, come on. This is exactly what Impact Wrestling needs. Right? As I said. You're saying who because you don't know who he is because all these people are doing is watching the WWE, they watch the AEW, and they don't know anything else outside of those promotions. They don't understand that there is a tremendous amount of, of untapped, unsigned talent on the indie scene that are just itching to get an opportunity and... Chris Bay is getting his opportunity here with Impact Wrestling. And you say who, and let's talk about Cody Rhodes for a second. Cody Rhodes was wanted to sign him. Cody Rhodes wanted to bring up the AEW. Now, if Cody Rhodes had signed him, had signed Chris Bay, all these people that would be saying that were saying who on the Impact Wrestling Facebook page, they would be saying, oh, great signing. Great signing by Cody Rhodes. He's going to do well in AEW. So there's always a double standard when it comes to Impact Wrestling, and it's, it's got to stop. It's got to stop. It's ridiculous. Uh, but anyway, Chris Bay. You know, th- again, I want to see. Uh, I want to see Impact Wrestling sign more guys like Chris Bay. If you listen to my past shows, I've mentioned a couple of names. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of talent out there that I think would be absolutely terrific in, in Impact Wrestling. Um, and they should. Uh, they need to get on a, a little uh, signing spree. <laughs> Scott Demore. Scott Demore has got to start going to shows. He's got to start bringing that those contracts with him. He's got to start stepping into the ring and saying, "Here, here's your three year contract uh, for Impact Wrestling." Um, and Tommy Dreamer. Tommy Dreamer was on. Uh, I forgot what show, but he mentioned that there are two more big signings that are going to be announced soon for Impact Wrestling. So I'm like salivating right now. I'm like, who? Who could it be? I mean, it's 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 a it's a great time. A great time for Impact Wrestling. They're getting um, more exciting. They're getting better, and they're bringing in some really really cool guys. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what Chris Bay will bring to Impact Wrestling. And I know it's going to be nothing but positive, positive energy to, to Impact Wrestling. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing who these other two signees are. And like I said, I want to see more guys coming in um, like Chris Bay because uh, they will do nothing but benefit, benefit Impact Wrestling. And they will definitely bring more eyes to Impact Wrestling. Um, that said, that said, gut check. Gut Check is returning to Impact Wrestling. Gut Check, as you know, they did a, um, they ran that back in 2012, 2013. Uh, I believe it was Hulk Hogan uh, when Hulk Hogan was with, um, was with uh, with Impact Wrestling. Sorry, I'm I'm looking at the internet right now. I'm putting up a page, so uh, <laughs> my concentration was broke there for a second. Sorry. So yeah, so when Hulk Hogan was uh, was running with Eric Bischoff, they they brought in a Gut Check. 
and um, it was uh, April twelfth to uh, to no to July two thousand thirteen. They were running Gut Check, and they had so they had some Joey Joey Ryan was actually a contestant on, on Gut Check. Uh, Alex Silva, Sam Shore, uh, Taylor Hendricks. Uh, Christian York, Wes Briscoe, um, Robbie E. Uh, well, I'm sorry, not Robbie E. Now, Robbie E. wasn't a contestant. He was an opponent for, for Alex Silva, Silva in gut check. Sorry about that. So, uh, but yeah, uh, Chris Louie. Chris Louie was also a uh, contestant uh, for gut check. And it was a good segment. It was a good segment. I, I know they did a thing with uh, Joey Ryan. Uh, he were, he refused a contract, and he um, I think he got into a feud with Al Snow or thing. But it was it was interesting. That it was good because they're bringing in uh, good young talent, um, guys that people weren't aware of, and they were giving them a chance to shine. And they're going to do that again. And I'm all for it. I'm all for it. This is going to be great. This is going to be fantastic. I'm really looking forward to this. I'm really looking forward to seeing who they're bringing in, um, who is going to be part of uh, Gut Check and on how long it's going to be uh, and um, who the opponents are going to be uh, for uh, for the contestants. Uh, I'm thinking there's going to be maybe um, eight to ten contestants. Um I wouldn't mind if they had like a male uh, male division and a and a female division where they have ten males and ten females. Uh, that would be that would be great. That would be fantastic. And they they should definitely find three or four, maybe five or six top indie talent that's going to be part of Gut Check and um, and and offer them contracts and bring them in. It's it's going to be it's it's going to be exciting. And like I said, I'm looking looking forward. Looking forward to Gut Check coming back to Impact Wrestling. Very, very, very exciting. Um, Sacrifice. Sacrifice has come and gone. And I absolutely loved Sacrifice. It was a absolutely tremendous show. That opening match between the North and the Rascals absolutely tore the house down. Um, I liked Jay Bradley versus Willie Mack. Tessa Blanchard against Ace Austin. That was terrific. We had Rhino against Moose. I absolutely loved it. I loved the show. I loved the show. I even enjoyed the Joey Ryan Johnny Swinger match. And I'm not a Joey Ryan fan. Um, just in the beginning, the whole well, the whole thing with the VHS tape, you know, Johnny Swinger's greatest hits on VHS tape. I thought that was funny. I I was I was laughing at that. That was that was good. And um, when he asked uh, Joey Ryan to lie down, I know Joey Ryan. When jo- Joey Ryan wasn't going to accept defeat, when, when he did the small package, I thought that was going to be the end of the match. But they had a decent match. They had a decent match. I enjoyed it. It was a like I said, it was a very very good show. Uh, Daga against Jake Christ. Uh, another terrific match. Jordan Grace successfully defends the title by choking out Havoc, and I like the way she won. Uh, she got on three straight sleeper holds, and finally the third one, she was able to choke out um, Havoc. So it was a, a big win there for uh, the Impact um, Impact Wrestling Knockout Championship. So uh, good defense there for Jordan Grace. I I, I enjoy that. Um, again, I mentioned Rhino versus Moose. I thought they were giving us a, a cheap match when uh, the ref disqualified Moose, uh, but then Rhino gets on the mic and says, "Yo, I didn't come all the way here to to uh, Kentucky uh, to uh, win by disqualification. Um, so let's continue the match and make it a no disqualification match." And, uh, and Moose accepts, and Moose winds up defeating Rhino. Um, and uh, with the spear, and I enjoy that match. And uh, who else do we have here? Uh, there was the pre-show. I kind of miss. Um, I kind of miss uh, missed the pre-show. I didn't know there was a pre-show on on uh, Twitch. Uh, I found out it's too late, so I kind of missed the pre-show. Uh, and we had um, AC that AC Romero and Larry D. Let's talk about them. They they team for the first time uh, the night before against the North, and they did a really really good job. And it was a really good match uh, at uh, at Outbreak against the North. And I really like this team. I really like the team of AC Romero and Larry D. I think they did a great job on both nights. Um, on night one, they lost to the North, and on night two, they were victorious over Madman Fulton and uh, Dave Christ. Now, uh, my man BQ mentioned we were talking about the match uh, a few days before, and uh, he did mention to me that uh, he thinks Dave Christ is going to uh, eat the pin. 
and lose the match for his team and get pinned by Larry D. And he was spot on correct on that. Larry D got the victory over Dave Christ in that match. But it was a very, very good match. I Again, I like the team. And I, I hope this is going to be a regular team because they Impact Wrestling needs more tag teams. I can see Larry D and AC Romero actually challenging the North for the, for the Impact Tag Team titles uh, in the future. So I, I hope, I hope that they keep them as a team. And I'm glad to see Larry D get in there. I'm glad to see Larry D get in there. I know on my last podcast I was saying, where's Larry D? They signed him, but we don't know where he is. He hasn't shown up. But Larry D showed up, and he got a nice pop at Outbreak, and uh, he did a great job on both shows, uh, as did AC Romero. And I'm very, very happy, very, very happy for, for Larry D. And AC Romero. I'm very happy for Impact Wrestling in general. They, they did a great job this weekend. And um, what else do we? Oh, like I, said, I mentioned, they, there was outbreak. We had an outbreak. Now outbreak was okay. I, I, I thought, I thought sacrifice was a hell of a lot better. A hell of a lot better. Uh, it looked better. Uh, Production-wise, it looked better. The, the arena was better. Uh, I thought it was a much better show than, than outbreak. Now at sacrifice. I, I had a, a feeling that, uh, and I was wrong, I was wrong. I had a feeling that Scott Demore was going to uh, offer Jay Bradley a contract. I just, I was thinking, he's on both shows. Um, he, does, uh, he does really well in, in the ring. And I, I thought maybe Scott Demore is going to show up and, and give Jay Bradley a, a contract uh, for Impact Wrestling. But that, unfortunately, was not the case. Scott Demore did not show up at sacrifice and did not offer Jay Bradley a contract for Impact Wrestling. Now let's talk about Tessa Blanchard versus Ace Austin. Now this was a non-title match. I was a little confused about that, and 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 I think it should have been a title match. I think the Impact Wrestling title should have been on the line. And here's why: you know, you you, you put the title on Tessa Blanchard. Uh, first woman ever to hold the world a world championship, which is yeah, China China never held the WWE title. So she's a Tessa Blanchard. Unless I'm sadly mistaken, is the first woman ever to hold a top title in any professional wrestling promotion. So you want to make her a fighting champion. That's that's my opinion. You want to make her a fighting champion. You don't want to stick her in some non-title matches or in some tag team matches because it looks like you're, I don't know, it looks like you're trying to protect her or take it easy on her. She's well-deserving of the Impact Wrestling World title. Well-deserving. Make her a fighting champion. Don't make it look like, oh, she's got the title, but she never defends the title against anybody, so what's what's the big deal? You put the title on her because you felt she could carry the company, and you're right. She can carry any company, any company. She's that damn talented, but make her a fighting champion. She should have got in the ring and said, you know what? This is bullshit. I don't want a non-title match. I'm a fighting champion. I'm going to put the title on the line against Ace Austin tonight. That's what they should have done. Josh Matthews says, oh, the title's not up for grabs, but this is for bragging rights. What are you talking about? What bragging rights? What bragging rights? Oh, who, who the better wrestler is? It's clearly Tessa Blanchard because she has the higher title. Uh, Ace, Ace Austin, the, the X Division champion. Tessa Blanchard, the world champion. So there's no bragging rights there. Tessa Blanchard has the bragging rights. This match should have been for the Impact Wrestling World Championship. Tessa Blanchard should be defending that title on every show against a variety of opponents a variety of opponents she should be defending that title she should be defending that title hands down no no question about it no question about it you want her to be the champion let her be a champion that defends her title at every single opportunity and those are my thoughts on that all right let's uh let's move on there was um Impact Wrestling, uh, Eddie Edwards has got a victory over Michael Elgin, but Impact Wrestling called it a shocking upset. You know, Eddie Edwards with a shocking upset over Michael Elgin. You know, this this is a great series. 
uh, Eddie Edwards, Michael, Michael Elgin, two extremely talented wrestlers. They're having a great, great series here. But Eddie Edwards defeating Michael Elgin is not a shocking upset. Um, let's see. What would be a shocking upset? If, if um, I'm trying to think of a... Uh, I'm trying to think of somebody. Um, who's that? Uh, anyway, let's just say say you have a, a jobber come in. I can't think of any any jobbers right now, unfortunately. I, I'm sorry. So say you have a jobber come in and and he gets a victory over Michael Elgin. Uh, say the guy's name was like uh, uh, Michael John. Michael John comes. In. Okay, say Lewis Carlin. Me. Say Lewis Carlin <laughs> steps into the ring and I and I wrap uh, Michael Elgin up in a small package and uh, and I get the victory. That's a shocking upset. That's a shocking. Lewis Carlin defeating Michael Elgin on national TV. That's a shocking upset. Eddie Edwards defeating Michael Elgin, which we all expected was going to happen, you know, because I predicted when this series started that Michael Elgin was going to win the first two, Eddie Edwards is going to win the second two, and then they're going to go to uh, the one deciding match, and um, I picked Michael Elgin to, to be the uh, the victor um, by cheating, and that, that was that was, that's what I predicted for this for this um, series, and I'm right, and I'm right, and uh, Eddie Edwards wins a uh, match, and he's probably going to win the next one. I'm, I'm not giving a spoiler. I have no idea. I don't read spoilers, uh, but I'd be very surprised if Eddie Edwards uh, isn't doesn't go over uh, in the next match. But uh, it's not a shocking upset. Not a shocking upset there. Totally expected Eddie Edwards winning that match over Michael Elgin. Another thing that Impact Wrestling I think needs to kind of you know put the brakes on, put the brakes on, is using the word dream matches. Or dream team. We're using the word dream all together. I'm watching uh, Impact Wrestling. You know, Tommy Dreamer, Trey Miguel, Tessa Blanchard, a tag team. They're being interviewed, and the interviewer, whose name her name escapes me right now, uh, she says that Tommy Dreamer, Trey Miguel, Tessa Blanchard are quite the dream team. I'm sorry, but they're not a dream team. Uh, maybe they're, maybe there's a think, maybe she's thinking, you know, you have the legend Tommy Dreamer, you have the young and up and coming Trey Miguel, and you have uh, the women's champion, I'm sorry, the world champion Tessa Blanchard uh, forming a team, but no one thinks that. She says, you know, I I don't think there's anybody out there who says, you know, I have a I really hope one day that Tommy Dreamer, Trey Miguel, and Tessa Blanchard team up because that's a true dream team right there. So they they have to put the brakes on using the word dream. You know, I know there's been a lot of matches. And it all it all started, I think, with Matt Morgan and Crimson, when Matt Morgan said that he's challenging Crimson to a dream match that the fans want. That's where it first started, I think. And a lot of matches, like it seemed like when when RVD was being put in matches in the beginning, that every every match that RVD was in was being called a dream match. Uh, but they they got to put their brakes on that. Not everything is a dream match, and uh, I don't. There, there really aren't too many uh, people that you could put together in Impact Wrestling right now that you could call a dream team. So they, they need to put the brakes on that a little bit, in my opinion. In my opinion. And uh, another thing I want to touch t- touch on, you know, Tommy Dreamer. He said he's been wrestling for thirty years, and this seemed to be a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a shock to Dre Miguel because he looked over to Tessa Blanchard and he mouthed thirty years. I mean, does does Dre Miguel know who Tommy Dreamer is? I mean, I thought that was. Uh, I thought that was a little silly that uh, he acted like surprised, like "Wow, thirty years! Like, who is this guy?" You know, he sh- what he should have done. He should have showed respect. He should have clapped his hands. He should have bowed. Uh, did something, shown a sign of respect to Tommy Dreamer, uh, because everybody knows who Tommy Dreamer is. And if Trey Miguel is going to be his partner, and he doesn't know who Tommy Dreamer is, there's, there's something wrong there. So acting surprised that Tommy Dreamer was, is in the business for thirty years. Um, I don't know. That's that. It, it it just rubbed me the wrong way. That's all. That's all. Okay. Now it is time to take a look at what the Impact Wrestling trolls on social media are saying. So let's go take a look. 
I have a couple up here. There is a post that Impact Wrestling put up. They put up a clip of Tessa Blanchard and Ace Austin. And I'm not going to mention any names. I'm not going to call anybody out here, but I'm saying I, I will read the post, uh, the comment from this internet wrestling troll. He writes, intergender matches are a joke. Pro wrestling already gets laughed at enough, and you got this joke of a company doing this. First of all, I, I hate when, when these internet trolls, they put up these posts, uh, but they don't really give any explanation. Like, why does this guy, Justin, think internet intergender matches are a joke? Why why does he think they are a joke? It's... it's it doesn't make any sense. I don't. If there's nothing wrong putting a man and a woman in a professional wrestling ring because they're both athletes and let them have a match, there's nothing wrong with that at all. It's happening. It's happening all over professional wrestling today, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it. They're not in a real fight. They're not really fighting. They are, this is a, um, this is a work. This is a work, guys. It's, it is a predetermined finish. The match is all worked out beforehand. Uh, they, they take care of each other in the ring. I'm not saying people don't get hurt. They, they do get hurt in the ring, but they take care of each other in the ring. And this, if you're going to make a comment, explain why you think it's a joke. Explain why you think it's a joke, because I don't think it's a joke. I think it's a dumb comment just saying that intergender matches are a, jo- intergender matches are a joke. He says pro wrestling already gets laughed at enough. Who's laughing at pro wrestling? W- w- what are people laughing at? W- what is he talking about? What do you mean pro wrestling is laughed at enough? That, that doesn't make any sense. Nobody's laughing at pro wrestling. You know, I don't, I don't get it. And he's, this guy's supposed to be a professional wrestling fan, but he's saying that pro wrestling already gets laughed at enough. What is he talking about? It doesn't make any sense. But then he says that you got this joke of a company doing this, referring to Impact Wrestling, because he's obviously not watching Impact Wrestling. He obviously didn't watch the whole match between Tessa Blanchard and Ace Austin because it was a fantastic match. So if you're going to start coming out and calling Impact Wrestling a joke of a company, what you need to do is you need to go to Facebook. You need to go to Impact Wrestling. You need to leave the group. If you think Impact Wrestling is a joke, you need to leave the social media group right now because, damn it, it's not a joke. Impact Wrestling is tremendous. It has They're loaded with talent. It, this guy, he probably didn't even watch Sacrifice. And that was a fantastic moment. You cannot watch. Nobody in their right mind can call themselves a professional wrestling fan, watch Sacrifice, and say Impact Wrestling is a joke of a company. So he could take these comments and he could shove them up his ass. Okay, that's that's that for that. So let's go on to the next one. Because I'm getting worked up. I'm getting worked up. I'll get worked up. So, and there's another. Somebody had post posted. Uh, there was a sacrifice post. Sacrifices in a couple hours, or sacrifices tomorrow. And uh, some guy he he writes, "I'm driving three hours to be there live tonight," which is great. Which is great. And then the next guy comments, "Wow, what a waste of a three hour trip." L M A O. Dude, dude, do you really have nothing better to do in your life? than to sit at home, scroll through Impact Wrestling posts to see what comment you could you could uh, you could um, crap on, and kind of you know kind of stupidly. I, I just, it just doesn't make sense. Do you have to post something if somebody wants to drive three hours to a professional wrestling show, which I have done many many times in my lifetime. That's their business, and he, he that. That three-hour drive there and three-hour drive back was well worth it because Sacrifice was a phenomenal show. And you got idiots like this who try to take away the fun of, of going to a professional wrestling show by making stupid-ass comments like this. And he was ripped apart by a lot of people. But please, dude, if you're not going to a show, if you don't want to go to a show, that's your freaking business. Don't take away fun or the fun that somebody else might be having by going on a little road trip, by going to a professional wrestling show, which happens to be Impact Wrestling, which happens to be a terrific, terrific promotion. So 
basically, dude, ow, see, I'm getting worked up, my hands are flying, I hit the table, so you don't have to make dumb comments like that, you can stick those comments, you know, again, I'll say it again, up your ass, pal, up your ass, and let's, one more, one more, uh, I, this was on Instagram, this was on Instagram, um, it was, a, it was a Joey Ryan versus Dave Christ, they, they pushed, they showed a clip of that, now, I, now I will say that it was from Outbreak, it, wasn't it wasn't the best match I've ever seen in my life. I'll admit that. But this this guy, he posts impact should maybe impact should just shut down. Okay, so I responded to him. I responded. We went back and forth for a bit, and then somebody else responded to him. And uh, I'm gonna pull up the other. Okay, so here it is. So he says, "Their pay per views, they just need talent." And some other guy responds, they have talent. If you, mean, if you need more talent, then yeah, sure, of course. And he goes, they need more talent because they have to have more matches, not the same matches every week. And so he's like, this other guy says, well, what are you talking about? They don't have the same matches every week. It's uh, yeah, Right now, Michael Elgin and Eddie Edwards are in a uh, series, but what are you talking about? Be specific. And then, the, then this idiot replies, I don't know because I don't watch Impact Wrestling, but I do know that they only have ten wrestlers that they use. You're, you're making, you're basing your silly comment on one clip. The point is, I don't watch. He's making all these comments that Impact Wrestling is having the same matches every week, uh, that they don't have any talent, that they don't have any enough talent. Uh, they have the same 10 wrestlers, and when he's called out on it, he says, I don't even watch Impact Wrestling. So how could he even make any comments on Impact Wrestling if he doesn't even watch Impact Wrestling? It doesn't make sense. It's, it, he's, he looks like an idiot, and he is an idiot. It's so stupid. Why are you making comments on Impact Wrestling if you don't even watch Impact Wrestling? If you sat down and watched Impact Wrestling, watched for the next three weeks, you will be changing your tone. You will be changing your opinion on Impact Wrestling. Don't make stupid comments on social media if you have no clue what the hell you are talking about. Okay, and that that's it. That's it for um, for this uh, segment of let's see what Impact Wrestling trolls are doing. That said, I want to say that I have two interviews coming up for the Impact Lounge right here on Shooting Up North. It will be with uh, Josh Alexander and one with Larry D. So those are coming up. So keep an eye open for those again right here on the Impact Lounge. And until next time, thank you for joining me. Take care. Bye-bye. Stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye-bye.